Hi, it's Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And today we're talking about variable um, inlet tracks or variable runners. So what we need to do first is we need to look at, you have your port, like so. You have a valve. That's a tickety-boo valve, that. I use different colours, why not? And then you have a load of other gubbins like so, which usually has your throttle body assembly so obviously that's a wrap round here like so with a fucking butterfly on it so that's throttle body body assembly, we'll just go with injectors because it's just a bit easier and then sometimes it's not this long you know it, some of them go straight up and sit on top of the engine it doesn't really matter and then you have your air box So we're going to do an entire series actually on air boxes and why they're important and all the different resonances and so on and so forth. But with a system like this, your um, runner length, so this entire length here, your track length, is fixed, which is a problem because RPM is not fixed. So you know how does this affect anything? So what happens is, is your um, I'll, a brief description of how your airbox works would, would be good for a start. Um, so air is drawn in here, vacuums, moving airflow and all the rest of it. And then the reason why you have an airbox is for uh, stability. So this tract is about to draw in air on the next induction stroke for a four stroke. And the airbox is there to stabilise the air Make sure it's not going this way or this way or the wind's going that way or you're falling out of a fucking aeroplane it's going the other way. It's to stabilise the air. It's to give the air chance to have an even pressure distribution all over. You've got to remember this system is um, drawing in air, then not, then not, then not, then drawing in air because it's a four stroke and all the rest of it. So your pulse isn't weird and all the rest of it. So this is kind of like an end cap where it's like a waiting room, that's the best way I can think about it. The air goes in here and then it just basically spaces out and it's nice and settled and then, and then it gets drawn in. It basically means that the engine is drawing in the same air, it's quite predictable. It's like a dampener, it's like an air dampener. It's, there. it's like a waiting room, just calm down a minute and we'll be with the doctor will be with you in a second. So obviously this uh, valve opens, now there is air already in here obviously. Um, you've just sprayed fuel onto the back of your valve, the hot valve has made the uh, fuel evaporate into the actual air that's around here, then the valve opens and then piston goes down to lower pressure region so all this wants to expand into your cylinder. All is good. So everything starts to have a net flow direction of this in this direction which is all good and it fills your cylinder and the longer this goes on the more uh, the, the greater the speed inside the flow because at first you open the door and the horse gets going but it's obviously quite slow it needs to accelerate it's the same with the air over time it needs to accelerate and then what happens is, is some evil bastard goes and closes the valve door slam in your face so the air whacks the back of the valve and then all the air behind it that's going, <gasps> that's all rushing towards the cylinder, all, it's like a car crash, it's like a concertina, they all back up into each other. So you get a bit of a pressure increase here. The flow is still migrating this way, but it's starting to slow down. You know, it's like cars, a couple of cars crashing a, on the highway or on the motorway, and then the cars behind that see it and they all start to slow down. And you start getting a tailgate where it starts to move backwards. So as this all starts to slow down, this is higher pressure, this is now higher pressure than all this because this has all got velocity which means it's dropped some of its pressure. So then a pressure wave then starts to go back. Now it's not the air that's really going back, it will do, it'll start to expand a bit, but it's more of a pressure wave, it's a density that goes back. It goes back, it comes to the air box, it's then reflected back in, a lot weaker this time because this is a massive cavity and there's obviously air been drawn in to replace all this shit that's gone missing. The pressure wave goes back there, it gets dampened here, and then a slight pressure wave comes back. And hopefully, if you time it correctly, when your valve opens, that pressure wave that's on its way back goes in. 
so you've got a little high pressure boost not boost as in boost you know supercharging or whatever it's just a higher pressure increase a little kick a little boost uh, that pressure wave comes in and it arrives at the valve when the valve opens great the thing is this is determined by two things it is determined by the track length here and the engine rpm and the reason why the rpm is because the rpm is revolutions per minute and it's the minute bit because the minute is a time vector so this is your time vector it's not vector <laughs> this is your time component so your time component and the length of your um, inlet track the speed of sound or the speed at which pressure waves can move through a medium depending on temperature and pressure um, but this tract has you know a defined length so what can you do um, you know when this starts to change your rpm is going to change this is the variable um, is your rpm but this length isn't well one of the things you can do is have a variable inlet tract which basically let me get my rub rub rubber out yeah i don't need that shit anymore um, so basically a variable inlet tract is you've got your your runner into your valve and all this it and then you'll have your throttle body here so that's your throttle body there and then on your actual runner here you will then have a runner in a runner it usually has a fucking dickhead trumpet on or something like that well the one for the um formula one and uh, the 787b the example i'll probably put on the screen and all the rest of it some of these engines have variable intakes and basically all they have is like a, it can be a collar it can be a very large helix um helix a thread but basically all it is it's usually a fucking motor or a rack and pinion or something like that where you have actuation rods and what have you and all this does is this increases and decreases the length of the runner versus your rpm and these really are the fucking dog's balls um it does make quite a difference what it does is it doesn't increase the it doesn't increase the power of your engine it bloody broadens your power band quite substantially just depending how well you can get it to uh, how much you can get it to move and how well it seals and as long as none of these lips and stuff inside do cause it some kind of weak turbulence or restriction because there's a lip but if you've just say you've got a fucking some like power band like this give it a bloody lines mat you can literally broaden flatten out that you'd be just as high I've been a dick here yeah you can broaden out that um your uh, uh power band for god's sake you can broaden out your power band an awful lot because you are not at the mercy of this length of this tract how long do they generally make um these tracks well where the the, the the inlet track length is very dependent on or your power band is very dependent on where that should be you want to try and move your power band and this length towards higher rpm because the engine makes torque and the faster you're going the more power that is because it's torque over time so you don't want to set your track length to run its most efficient at fucking 30 percent rpm yes yeah, so you don't want you know set your track length to run optimum at 30 percent of your rpm because that's ridiculous because it's torque multiplied by your rpm which gives you power so you kind of want to have your power band so your track length is usually where your power band is it affects your power band it is the reason why your power band is there but your power band is usually there because it's usually on the higher rpm side of things the torque is all to do with how well your engine breathes in your power band peak torque so again it all goes hand in hand and generally this all starts to begin the process from how fast can you fling around all your components however is your crankshaft however is your con rod and your pistons how you know material strength versus how much our components weigh how strong are they and how fucking much can we wing them around right let's go 80 percent of the maximum of what we can do so it doesn't fail and explode what speed is that that's 10,000 rpm right then let's try and have our runner lengths to operate the best or breathe the best and let the engine breathe the best around 10,000 rpm so then your torque and your power curves and your power band will sit around about there 
Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.